right, let's start this vote review of Clarabella sending uh, the tape from our community. Um, it's a Diamond Peak player who is playing right now Phoenix on Attack on Pearl, and she would like to have advice on what she had been doing wrong in this game because that's her bad game. So we're gonna see how that goes. But first, we we start with the pistol round, and I already see a bit of a misconception on the pistol buy. Like, the thing that I re I think is really important to understand when it comes to um, pistol buys is that typically you either go for an upgrade of the weapon or you go for armor. Essentially, unless you're like typical support, like Breach can go for full util, no armor. Like that's one of the agents that kind of feels like fate as well. Like the initiators that are typically like more supportive in a like professional setting go for um, more utility over armor or an upgrade of the weapon. But when it comes to playing Phoenix in ranked, I really do think that buying for yourself is much more important than buying for anyone else. So let me say that I am playing uh, the turn of infinite creds and infinite abilities, right? So uh, right here, when we start the pistol round and we have 800 credits, right? We have the ability to buy essentially blaze, armor, and a curveball for the pistol round, which is nice. So you're able to play. So you're able to buy blaze and one flash, right? And an armor for the pistol round. Let me just show you like this. We're able to buy like this. This is gonna be our buy for pistol round: blaze, curveball, and light shields. And this allows you to be, be way more aggressive because you have the ability to survive one ghost headshot and still kind of heal yourself if you didn't use the molly or the wall before, right? So you have a lot of flexibility. The other options are essentially buying a ghost and then buying a curveball or a blaze, depending on what you want to achieve with that current round. But buying full util on Phoenix kind of feels troll because you want to be in their face, right? So not buying armor or not buying a better gun feels like you're gonna get just swept away. So that's my first advice when it comes to uh, playing ranked on a pistol round. Free here. Spike down B. Your crossbow oh. definitely needs work. That's something that definitely will need a lot of work. All right, so for example, here from the smoke, right? That's that's why I said the cross replacement needs a lot of work. See what, like when the smoke dissipates, right? You see that your crosser is, is looking at the ground instead of being ready to to fight. This might also come from the fact that you maybe you don't know the map well yet, like maybe you didn't play a lot of pearl, right? But the thing is, it's one of the most important uh, things in the game. Knowing how to hold your crosser when you're peeking. So you can avoid situations like this. Because right now, your crosser is nowhere to help you fight. Right? So when we appear from this smoke, um, I would say that the most important aspect that you want to do... Uh, sorry, not the mo most important aspect, but the way you would like to... Uh, you, you would like to essentially have your crosser is one of those points. Like... One of those three points should be your crosser at already when you peek through the smoke. So you avoid doing like a, how do I explain it? A, a swipe. You don't want to do a swipe. You don't want to do a flick from this point to another point. So when you peek, you want to have your crosser already in that point that you want to shoot at, right? It's one of the most important skills in tactical FPS that you need to learn. And it comes from practice, but also comes from uh, actual um, experience when you put attention to it, right? So let's say, let's say uh, I'm going to be picking a corner, right? I'm going to be picking a corner. Let's, let's do this example. It can be, I can be in a smoke. I can be in whatever position. I uh, Like I, I can be limited with a vision because of some fade abilities and so on. But I still want to peek in a way that guarantees that I can move my crosser the least, Right, so I'm gonna be peeking into mid, and I'll be peeking into the area of the double doors. And when I do that, I want to have my crosser already in a spot where I don't have to move it when shooting, because I anticipate where that 
position is, right? Like here. See, I didn't move my mouse at all. That's one of the most, like, let's say basics, but um, it's actually very hard to master unless you're putting a lot of work to it because it's something that um, you need to constantly think about and then put into a habit, right? So you need to, like, make a consistent thing for yourself when you're peaking is always thinking, is my crosser too low? Is my crosser too high? Is my crosser even like peaking into a direction that I want it to be? You know? Like that's something that's something that requires just a lot of practice. I don't see my bad crosser placement in the game only after in my clips. That's why like practicing in in um in, in range or on, on a custom map is still worthwhile because you should be just going uh, into, in it, 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 like, you should be practicing the common angles, right? She wanted the dog. Oh, hey. Sky flash. You know what to do. Did you buy anything? Let me check. We're gonna we're gonna continue with the peaks like the way that you want to peak at the at the end of the vote review because we're gonna gather she wanted the dog. what we can work at. So you didn't buy anything for this round. Wait, flash. Uh, flash also. So you went into a smoke without the ability to know what is in it, right? That's so first, first point. You should be closer to jet. Mm -hmm. Like that's actually something that I feel like a lot of people do un unconsciously, okay? I'm not saying you're doing this on purpose, but essentially what, what you ended up doing is baiting the jet. Because look, the jet starts in the closest point to the barrier and goes forward. You stand way further down from the jet and also make a pause before you start going forward. So what ends up happening is you are so far away from the jet that you can never trade her. Look. Look, see how long did it take to you to catch up to Jet? And she is with a knife while you're with a pistol, so you're even slower. She wanted the dog. So right now, there's no way for you to be close to Jet to try to trade her. See, and Astro just gets a free kill. Okay. I thought we were walking, not running, but no one was making any calls, right? So still, like you should be just as a phoenix. Or any, it doesn't matter what, what agency you play. You want to be closer to the player that goes first. Because it's your fault that you're not trading him. And not his fault for even not communicating. Right? Like you see the player that is in front of you. Like that's something that many people in ranked actually don't do. And it drives me nuts for the past three years. I had very high expectations three years ago. I was pissed. I was mouthing a lot. Because I couldn't understand how are immortal ranked players not understanding trading. Then it just it is what it is. Right? So always remember when you are playing in ranked, it's your job to catch up to the player in front of you, not the other way around. You can't read his mind, but you can follow him and trade him. Right? And the thing is here, right now, like you're in a position where this flash, if you're standing here, doesn't really benefit you, right? First, you want to flash like over the top because you want to flash the backside of A, right? And second of all, like if you flash over here, look at the angles that are being flashed. Just those, right? So it doesn't really give you much. So this smoke actually helps you. So even if you have the flash over here, like I wouldn't flash it. It seems like a waste because you really did that. You don't, you don't really give get much from it on an eco round so i would rather save this cash you're already losing it's like 4v5 right so no point in spending any util that you don't get for free unless you get into an advantage but this smoke actually now helps you but the thing is you should be swapping to a classic then you go into the smoke check if the smoke is clear and then re-equip the flash before you exit from the smoke so i like the fact that you went into the smoke but you should have a classic right here Flash also. You didn't call the flash, understandable, but always say flashing, right? Have a habit. If you play with a character that has flashes, when you play flash, you say flash. 
Also, that's that's one of the things that all, uh, also very limits players. The way that you also. flashed and the way that you progressed into sight, the flash doesn't help you. Right? Look. The smokes are too late. That's definitely true. And the smokes are bad, by the way. Like, the smoke and flowers, I can already see it leaking onto sight. So, that's something that that brim has to change. This smoke is fine if it was earlier. So, there's a miscommunication here, right? Uh, but that's nothing you can change unless you're going to micromanage someone. That's not your job. Uh, but the way that you played here, like, you didn't play for yourself, right? So... What do you want to, like, if I would have to play this round, from, like, by myself over here, right? Let, let me show you what I mean. Is I would have gone differently just because of the way that I want to play for myself. All right, let's assume there's the smoke in front of us, which is going to use the wall. So I don't see shit, right? So what I want to do is guarantee that I can either go into this direction or into this direction, right? So if I, you flash like this. Oh, sorry, right click actually. Uh, you flashed like this. So it didn't flash the player that is deep in this position. You flash the player who is. Oh my god, epic pen. Ugh, I hate this. You flash the player who is in the corner, right? Or maybe close here. But you didn't flash the player in the flowers. So if I want to take like any, any kind of uh, positioning right here, I would have flashed. The way like you did, but higher, and then peek from the left side, so I don't expose myself to the angle that I'm not flashing, right? So if I go like this, I go here, I peek close to the wall, so I can check this corner, there's no one here. Now I can progress towards, uh, towards, um, towards art, right? And take maybe even a position here, which is isolated from other players, and maybe I can get into one v one gunfight. Right? But if I go like you, I flash here, and I go into this direction, I flash the player in here and check him, but then I'm exposed to all the different angles, right? The player from Deep Flowers can still kill me when I'm going here. Then I expose myself to this angle over here and this angle over here, right? So your flash didn't really help, because the, the angles that you flash, apart from this one, the players are, like, not affected by it, Right? Yeah, as you can see, the, the smokes are awful. Like, the smokes on flowers should end here, not here. And the this smoke here has a gap, by the way. So, that's also a problem. If you want to smoke, like, if you want to cover both dugout and secret, then you have to put the smoke, unfortunately, closer to the side like this, so there's no gap. And if you want to make a proper smoke, you have to end it like this, essentially. Right? So, those smokes should be, like, here. Oh, my God here and here instead of like this unless you want to cover dugout and, and flowers but then it's a bad smoke but it should end like this all right let's see first full buy so you bought a share uh, you bought a vandal okay and and full armor um remember that when you're playing phoenix doesn't matter which map you always want to prioritize getting orbs Wanted to know your thoughts on Carmine Comp as many people marding at their place? Yeah, they're pretty fucking bad. Mm -hmm. Don't you guys remember what I was saying before the season started? Because I got asked about KC a lot, and I was always saying, like, they, they don't have a good IGL, they don't have an idea on how to play together, and they're gonna get wrecked by teams who have better fundamentals. That's literally what's happening. Yes, yes. Watch your eyes! Uh, that's another thing. Look, look at the flash. Yeah, this is actually something that, uh, if you want to spam yes, Phoenix, yes. right? I feel like that's. A, I'm not saying this is very important right here, but the angle that you flash doesn't really give you much as well. Because look, it it explodes over here, right? I was molding at a lot of players who are flashing like this because it doesn't get the player the first contact here. Like this doesn't really help you. Right? You want to flash over here as close to this wall as possible because an operator is typically standing on top of this position and will fucking wreck you. So you just 
essentially peek into this position without helping yourself, right? Sky never flashed when I asked her to. Can't really do anything about other players. That's what I'm. But you always want, can do something about your own play, right? If you're flashing here, like just flash as close to the wall as possible, right? So let me show you. That's another thing that Phoenix players should practice a lot is reading the game, how to maximize the pop flash potential from your uh, utility. So you want to be sh certain i don't play phoenix right so I, I i will not have this right now ingrained but you should be like knowing how big of the flash is so you can a you can able to like pop flash fuck me you're able to pop flash wait uh by heart and what i mean by that is when you're gonna flash right here it's gonna go right around the corner see like this not like this, but like this, right? So you're able to, like, aim it as a proper pop flash. And this is the line, right? If you're standing from here to here, so that's five meters, that's how long the flash is, right? And that's a, that's a, that's a sense of distance that you need to ingrain in your visuals so you know that it's like, ah, that's gonna be a good pop flash, right? And you're then you're able to like work properly as a habit because you're gonna have this ingrained in your memory, like how big of a distance can you be f uh, away from the corner to like pop flash people, right? That's something that people who play Phoenix should practice a lot. And also remember, if you don't have support, if you don't have like a smoke here, use your own wall. Look. Look what can you achieve with a simple wall like this. You can gain all this space, right? By using the smoke, like your wall, essentially like a smoke f that typically a jet uses or something. Like you don't have to wait for those people. If they, they are not helping you, help yourself, right? Help yourself to clear those angles. I always use the wall on site, but that's one, that's one of the problems that I also see with players. You don't have to use the flash right? Uh, you don't have to use your flash, your wall, every time the same way. You have to be flexible. And right now, like, if you don't have the, 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 the smoke from Brim or the smoke from Jet, you can use your own wall to supplement that, right? Okay, Green. Side. We took a kill. Uh, See, the, oh, this is a very good example. Your crosser placement is way too low. Look. When you're peeking, we're gonna go frame by frame. So I can actually show it. When you're peeking this corner, look how your crosser placement looks. Right? This is you peeking the corner. Uh, See? You're aiming at his balls. So how do you fix this? How do you fix this in this situation? There's always a reference, right? So look at this, look at this line over here. The Varian devs are actually putting visual aid for you to make certain that you can see where the head should be around. So use this to your own advantage. If you want to pick a corner and you see something like this and you cross this here, well, that, that definitely means that your aim is way too high, right? So I can already say from watching those few rounds that you should definitely work on your peak crosser placements. So when I'm standing here, right, like that's how you peaked this way. What you want to do is you want to have your crosser already on this line and peaking that like this way, you know, like... Just below this line, if your cross is just below this line, it's the proper cross replacement, right? That's something that you need to practice. Like, the, the swings that you have your cross, like, it feels like you're swinging before your mind is ready to shoot a player because you only think about how to swing without thinking where to aim. 
right? So the first lesson in peaking is you want to move your mouse as little as possible while making the swing, right? So when you do a practice like this, just go, go on long B on Pell, stand behind this pillar and do swings like this, right? Do the swings like this with trying to not move your mouse too much and like reposition your crosser after each swing. So like I'm standing here, I'm looking down, now I'm looking up, now I want to swing into the direction of the, of the elbow and I want to have good crosser placement. So you need to work, you need to work like towards the goal of having crosser in the correct position. Like you need to work as a habit because unless you put that in your mind, like you need, this, this comes from practice. You need visual aid for yourself. You need to visualize where the opposing position is, right? And then put that crosser before you peek in that spot. Flashing behind you. So I did this for a few minutes before playing. Just, you know, I don't, I'm not saying before each game or something, but you should just practice this a little bit because it's, it, I think like, it's the biggest problem for you. Like, it doesn't matter, like, the utility doesn't matter, like, everything else. But you're, 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 from what I see, you're swinging before you're ready mentally to fight because your crosser is not thinking about fighting. That's it inside. It's like... Your cross is a lot of times in incorrect position, remaining. right? Backstab, backstab. Backside minus five, please. You know he's backside. You're in a 2v1. And you, you know that you just heard the player over here. So if you really want to plant, right? If you really want to plant, your position should be like, you just run behind your wall and you go here. Your player is on your left. So he's not going to help you. You just put a wall for your opponent for him to swing you here and kill you. So the proper decision here is you hear the player here, right? You go back behind the wall and you plant behind the box because you want your player to help you. Let me, let me get the up on A so I can ult. I got you, bro. Okay. Keep going. They have a lance of monies. Careful. Trevor! Got it. Sky goes right on side. Get up ult. Whole cats. Come on, let's go. Blinding. Blinding. Watch your eyes. See, it's, it's the same. It's the same thing that you did before, but this time you're not getting punished because there was no one in, in secret. The smokes were again too late. But it, you made the same peak that we talked about in pistol round. Good cross placement this time. Look. Your level, your headshot level was good, but you also see how the, how the smoke is bad. Look how the smoke is bad. You know what I mean? This is what, what, this is what I talk about when the smokes are bad. You are not ready for the angle of your opponent. You have good crosser placement when it comes to the to the um, position, but you still need to flick, like micro flick to the first player because you don't know where he's gonna be flicking, uh, coming from, right? See, it's like, okay, how can you predict that the player will be here? Well, you could predict that if the smoke would have been incorrect and end here instead of here. City. Best way to learn a bad habit of crouching time with the videos which sells you to unbind. Pipe and exclamation mark duels. Flashing. One enemy remaining. Excellent. 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 Uh, no reason to fight, by the way. No reason to fight. Okay. But good shot. But it's a 3v1, and if you die there in that position, there's a very high chance that your teammates will still lose the round. If you play safe, if you don't die, if you wait for the player to go on spike and then you peek together, no chance of losing. It's time for corner of shame for me. Why, Shadow Dash? Yeah, I'm gonna flash around the corner. 
Okay. Let's take what they I'm gonna have. let me fly away. I'm watching mid. Get out of my It's my smoke? <laughs> Shadow Dash! How on earth are you doing those smokes? When you watch the stream so much and you see me mauled about the smokes so much. Type in exclamation mark smokes, exclamation mark, exclamation mark worst smoke, exclamation mark pressure. Wait, chat. Oh no. Again, I mean, I know you're gonna do the same flash because you did it in the past, right? But it's like it didn't, it didn't clear the potential oh, operator, sorry, right? Sorry, sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm one that, mo that molly could have bounced. I know you just missed it, so that wasn't intentional. Oh, sorry, I didn't that. A little bit too high on the wall because it should reach the wall. Remember, you don't have to like look up when when. Remember, guys, if you play with walls, doesn't matter if neon wall, viper wall, and so on. Um, the range of the wall is shorter if you look up, right? You don't have to like look very far away, it, ver like you don't have to look like this because the, the wall is definitely gonna be like shorter because of that, right? So you want to be looking like hatchet level to make it the longest duration, right? All of the vo all, all of the walls are always shorter when you look up. Just remember that, right? And also, very important thing for Phoenix players that I think not many people actually know, even at the highest level, people make this mistake. So, l let me show you something. When you wall up, right, you equip your gun faster after you finish walling. But this doesn't happen until the wall finishes. So what happens here is... If I wall and I change the direction of the wall, right? My gun is not equipped till I finish like curving. See how, how long it takes, right? But if I do my wall just by clicking it, look when my gun equips. Just pay attention to the gun right now. When I'm going to just click. I'm going to click forward and just one tap it, okay? Look at the gun. And now look when I'm curving. See the difference? It's like half a second or even more. So when you want to be very effective, you want to uh, you want to literally just make a straight wall. If you want to make certain that you are as agile when it comes to taking a gunfight as possible, you want to do it a straight wall without curving. If you don't need the curve, don't be cute. Don't, just make a straight wall. You know? Don't think it applies to harbor walls. It does. I was flashed. Well. Spike down. I was flashed. So, okay. That's another thing that I see. Like... By the way, I understand that you got flashed. You cannot blame this guy because it's your own wall that is too short. It's kind of funny that hey, I just what? I just spoke about the wall being short because you you like aim too high, and now you got fucked just because of that. So that's kind of funny. Not gonna lie. But the thing is, even if you flash in this in this position, right, your your reaction is like that's again something that you have in your imagination, right? You hear the footsteps on your left. Like, when you're getting flash here, you hear the footsteps of the player on your left. So you know there's a player up close. You're getting fully flashed. Your reaction, if you would be, like, very quick thinking, should be, I'm getting fully flashed, I'm exposed on the left angle, I should go forward. So you should block yourself either on this position or on this position. Just make two steps forward, right? Just make two steps forward and just make sure that you don't expose yourself to the backside of B, right? What you can also do is reactively flash. What I mean by that is when you're getting like assaulted by utility, doesn't matter if your teammates or, or not, right? Let's, so I'm, I'm in your position right now. I'm getting fully flashed. What you did is you did this, right? You just followed the movement that you were doing before. If I'm getting fully flashed, my instinct tells me in this position to be like this. 
right? But then what my instinct tells me, when I'm fully flashed and I heard the steps on my left, I'm just gonna do this blindly. Oh, fuck me. I'm just gonna flash. Thanks, Epic Pen. What I wanted to do is just randomly flash to scare away the player that is over here. So essentially, when I'm getting fully flashed, I go like this. Like, it doesn't matter how the flash lands, it can even bounce behind me, can flash the players on long B, doesn't matter, the wall is still, still up here, but I don't want to die, right? So I, when I'm getting fully flashed from, from here, and I hear the player on the left, my instinct tells me, oh fuck, just do it randomly. Just make sure that I'm not getting pushed by the player here, because he hears the flash, and he goes, Wah! he just panics, you know? Spike down. Also, Shadow Dash, what the hell are the smokes? Well, One behind. Enough. Got the spike. Like I, I fully forgot that you you guys are playing with a brim. Reloading. I didn't flash you. He's okay. How much cash do you have? Wait, wait. They have a microphone. Okay, everyone has cash. He's okay. Hunt. 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 So that's not bad, right? But you still know that that guy has a showstopper. I understand that you want to take the gunfight, but I don't think this is a good gunfight. Like, the flash was good. Right? Like, what are the options here? What are the options here to make this a better round for yourself? Right? You know that the player with the showstopper is in front of you. You flash him fully, which is good. And you hear this. Your reaction should be fuck, 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 panic mode. Second flash. Fall back. Right? Make sure that this player got fucked because of the flashes from you and you can buy time for your team. Or, if you really believe in yourself, second flash, wide swing. Right? Second flash would probably, like, it, it would really help you with taking the decision either to fall back or fight. It's always good to secondary flash a player who is making such a big play, like, such a big move to, like, push you with a showstopper, right? Or if there's a jet with an ult or whatever. Like, you know that this is happening. You know that this player on long, he, on long, he is committed. He wants to come at you. So now we have just two, two plans. One plan, fall back, right? Fall back. Second plan, fight. And the second flash, because you flashed first, right? First flash. And then you have, like, this is your decision-making tree. You are doing the, the first flash. This is your first decision, which is a good decision, because you fully flashed the player with the showstopper. And now you have the... Actually, let me, let me do it again. So you do the flash. This is your flash. This is your first flash, right? The decision tree is looking like this. After the first flash... You have the decision to either fight or fall back, right? And you have to choose one of the outcomes. But there's also a supplemental choice in between here, which is the second flash. And it's not optional when you think about it. Because this secondary flash helps you with both buying time for your decision to what to do with the showstopper, but it also, the second flash helps you with both outcomes. Both of those decisions benefit from the second flash. Right? And this, again, comes from experience, comes from anticipating and being in those positions, but thinking about what could I have done better 
after this round is already done. That's what I'm trying always to teach people. Like, in this round, you can't say, oh, you can't bl blame, bl blame the player for, like, taking the gunfight out of the first flash. I don't. It was a valid decision. Could have ended greatly if you just hit your headshot after you did the flash, right? But after, even if it was a successful round, my brain goes into a default mode of thinking what could have, done be what could have been done better, right? It's like every round, doesn't matter if good or bad, but specifically important when it's a bad round and you die, you should always instantly think, what was the decision tree? What could I have I done differently? What are the decisions that I had to make to make this round better for myself? You know? Even with the second flash, the race will see you will use the ultimate in that corner. The right doesn't seem like an option play. No, but the thing is, look look at the position of the race. If you use the second flash, she needs go she needs to go back. So she's gonna be on a low ground against the high ground. So it's way tougher to hit the rocket if she's gonna be pushed away from you again. Look at her position right now, right? And if you make the second flash, she's gonna be even more towards the the um, even more towards the uh, the pillar. So you push away the player to a worse spot. No damage. Yo, Reza, thank you much for the 10 months. Welcome back. And also, Myzok, thanks so much for the 34 months. Two more and we have the rule 36 opportunity. The fuck is the rule 36? I'm so worried about that one because of that. But she would just shoot it even if she slashed again? Okay, so then you don't die because she most likely misses. He used the ulti instantly after he got flashed. The finger second flash would make him hold it longer. No, it would put the, it would literally put the race into panic mode. So if you put every single outcome I just I just did, okay, don't Google it. Okay, I will not. Every single outcome that I just did in the decision tree helps you with either killing the race or surviving the ult, because it buys you time, and that blind ult could have also like not get you because you don't expose yourself because you're still flashing. That's smoke. Last player standing. She's close mid. I should have... Thanks. Thank you. Jet, you can request back. I got there, Ozzy. Thanks. Um, just, just a very short note. I understand some people, sometimes people, including myself, have to be FK a little bit, or I'm talking with the chat and I'm late and so on, but I try to really avoid it. When the round starts, you want to be as close to the barrier, typically, as possible. You don't want the round, you don't want the, the round to start, and you being so far away from the barrier. Like, this is just, this is just not good. For 95% of the rounds, this is a mistake. You know, it's like you can't be close to trade the players. We talk about the fact that how you wanted to play with the jet, like when you're standing here, you were late to like be close to her and so on. Right. So you're always like late when you should be benefiting from the position as close as possible. And the jet is again in a position when she will not be traded. Ooh, be prepared for bad smokes. Brim is not sure what she's doing. I mean, uh, if you did your bad smokes for the first time, I don't expect you to fix it in the same game, right? So look, this smoke over here, this one is fine. This one is also fine if it doesn't leave a gap here. This one is just too deep. Just do it, end it here. That's it. Wait, wait, wait. Reloading. 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 But the thing is... Can, can you flash, like... like, you already used the three smokes, yeah, when you want it. right? Going now you use the smokes too early. The other rounds you are using them too late. Uh, it's about the it. it's about finding the middle ground. Do we have kill? See, now you don't have any Thank smokes. You. Yeah. Thank you. Watch out, maybe one mid door behind. Rotate, maybe. Morning, Sonata. You have to spike. Yeah, I know, I know. Mid. 
There's one more art. You just sold the player. Ah! Ugh. All right. So this is like, like one of the biggest offenders that I typically see, right? You just saw on the minimap. Look at the minimap. There's a player in art. Right? And your jet, even though she's here, she doesn't see it anymore. So this is like anxiety inducing. Like this player from, from the art can be already in this spot. So you would have peeked into a guy with no gun ready. Right? This is very important. This is very important to understand. Like, in most cases, in like 99% of the cases, unless there's a very, very niche situation, you don't want to pick a corner without a gun. Careful now. Right? That's just it. Like, just believe in yourself. Minus 26. You know that one is up? She's buff, I think. So now, now, there's a reason to actually look up. If you would have looked up while doing this wall, you would have covered top side as well. Unless you want the player from top to peek you. I don't think that was the intention, because you want to help the player from to plant, right? So it should be better to like wall up mid as well. Sorry, wall up the 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 top side as well, right? So it's very important right here when you do the wall. Just point at this direction over here. You point at this direction. Your wall covers everything, including the top, including CT, right? So it helps the player from long to plant the spike. Going up. She's buff, I think. Clearing out. Lock in sight. Ten seconds left. So, I don't mind the the push, but you did it very poorly, and let's talk about why. Found them. So you okay? So you know about this the flash? Uh, sorry, not about the flash. Uh, you know about the wall. You know where the city is. I don't think you knew about this the jet smoke, but the way that you picked this is both not ready to fight and also alerts your opponent that you're doing it. Because you're making so much noise, right? So, okay, let's let's explain it. So let's do the same wall that you did, like this, right? But if I would do a want prop wall, oh, okay. Wait, actually, maybe my advice wasn't the best because this looks pretty shit. Wait, well, I don't play Phoenix, so we can actually learn something as well. Does this always look like this? Yeah, that's pretty fucking shit. I mean, still helps a little bit. But not much. Okay, we learned something. This looks really fucking shit. The thing is, it, it doesn't like... Hmm, interesting. No, it's gonna always look like this. Unless you end it here, but then you don't cover the CT. Right? Yeah. Interesting. Okay, we will learn something. Still better to do like anything like this. Because it's like adds a little bit of cover for the player over here, right? But it doesn't do much if he like just peeks like this. Anyway, we learned. Uh, but the thing is that you did the wall like this, right? And if you walk into the wall, you blind yourself because the wall blinds if you're walking into it, right? And if you stay in the range and you didn't make enough space for yourself. But also, when you peek corners like this, you don't want to, like, peek them this, this way. You don't want to go forward. And you did, like, the, your push was... I don't want to wall, do the wall to not blind myself again. But you're pushing while alerting your opponents exactly of your position in a way that it's very easy to anticipate where you're going to be. So if I'm standing like here a revealing area. as a defender Found them. and a player just makes so much noise that he's going like in a straight direction, this is the easiest kill for me. But what happens if, if I get a better angle? Like what happens if I just swing like, you know, I take the space because it's, it's covered by the wall, right? 
So I don't have to worry about going to the f to the f uh, to the direction of of um, of the shortest and uh, shortest. Sorry, let me rephrase. I don't have to worry about the first angle to clear, right? Because if there would be if there would be zero smokes, I would have to swing like this, right? And you don't want to do swings close to the to the wall because your opponent sees you faster. The further away you're from the corner, the faster you see your opponent and the later you, your opponent sees you. But if you're peeking like very close to the wall, your opponent sees you faster than you see him, essentially, right? But because of the wall that you did, you're able to like change the angle and then swing into the possible, possible like angles without alerting him. Right, And it's very important, by the way, that when you are doing actual peaks, that's something that people need to learn really, really in, uh, as fast as possible, is remember that when you swing in the corner, there's a distance that you can do without making footsteps, right? I wasn't ready because I was dumb and didn't think there would be an enemy. That's the problem that many people, people have. Thinking that there's no enemy. Assume there's always an enemy, Right? Always assume there's an enemy. So, but one thing that you also need to work on is the way that you peek with a, with a sidestep. So, exclamation mark duels, right? And it's the same exercise. You peek with maximum speed without doing footsteps. See? I'm not pressing shift. Now I did the footstep because I made it too, too like, big of a, of a swing, right? But you need to learn this by heart so you can swing with maximum speed without doing the footsteps. See? This is the maximum that you can do. And you make essentially your opponents know that you're swinging, but if you want to like swing quietly, you can do that by just practicing. Right? Thank you, Galahad, for the gifted, by the way. And... Wait, we have Imgori with the eight months. Welcome back. Thank you so much for the incoming support. Eight month baby. Yeah, very close to to, to fucking labor. So anyway, uh, another thing that we, you de you will definitely benefit from practicing. You could have bought a Vandal here. You have 5.8k cash for the next round. And you have the ultimate. Buy a Vandal here. You will still have full 100 for the next round. Right? And you are able to, like, take a gunfight because you're going to have a better gun. And if you get a kill, then maybe you can think about using the ultimate to, like, Maybe get another kill or get the space. Like, put yourself in a position where you can benefit from your economy. Right now you have so much cash. You know? Thank you. Wait, one more time. Did it not count the stinger? Ah, never mind. You didn't buy this thing yet. I thought you already have it. My bad. Wait, so you have 4.7? To be? Uh, ah, no, never mind. Never mind. No, no, no. I'm good. I'm good. I was right. You just bought the sheriff for someone else. Yeah, fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. Don't buy this. Don't buy the sheriff. Buy yourself a vandal. Thank you. And also, now you're going into long... With a stinger. Like, always think about it th this way. Go into the direction on the map, which will benefit your hardware. If you're going in the, with the stinger towards long B, you're probably in a, in a, not in the best spot in the game to like take a gunfight. Right? Enemy spotted B. Like, unless you're a stinger master with really insane right okay. clicks. You might find it very hard for yourself to benefit from this. There was no one close, which is very odd. But yeah. We don't have a spike. 
squad? So, what would be my decision making here? If I would be in your shoes. Let's say I fall back to your position and now we have the money. I would not care about the sky, right? So I would just go close to this corner, use the molly over here, like you did, but I would have gone into the molly to try to get a kill. <sighs> you want to be proactive with the flashes as well, right? So they know about your stinger, you can... And I, again... Okay, so let me finish the thought and then we're gonna talk about this peak. So, you would like to be aggressive with that weapon and you still have one flash, so you would have gotten the... You would have been multitasking. You would have get position because you're in molly, so no one peeks you. You would have healed because you would have gone into the molly. And you would have used one of the flash that you still have to try to get a kill and benefit from your aggressive position. Right now, you lost all of the things... All of the things that you, you got by doing the first push, you lost when you went passive back to your place over here and used the molly for nothing. And now, very important lesson as well, this peak is insanely not ready. Look. See how we peek? It's like you make a micro flick because your peek is not ready. You're mentally like peeking too too early. I feel like what you do is your fingers tell you to peek before your head acknowledges that you want to do it. You know? Always be ready. Always tell your brain or always like let your brain tell you peek now. You know? And also, you made the mistake of peeking forward. That's another thing. We just talked about, like, peeking left, right? Look, how, look at your movement that you did before the peak. See? You're peeking diagonally. You are moving into this direction instead of moving this direction. You want to make a swing. You don't want to move forward. Right? So practice this left-right swing. Just do it accordingly to duels. That's something that you really need to learn. Like, your swing is not ready. You're taking an awkward um, position for the swing because you're literally not moving for your opponent. Your opponent sees your swing and doesn't have to move his crosser because you are not changing your position. You know? I wouldn't use the ultimate here. No, no, no. Um... The ultimate here, no point in using this. You are not in a good position. You're in a 3v4 on an eco. It would be a waste, most likely. Shut low. One enemy remaining. Above. I know this, but I need to make a muscle memory of it. Yeah, you need to make a habit. And also the spike. Look at the f look what the fuck uh, where the fuck the spike is. I would definitely not use the ultimate there. What the fuck is this guy doing? Oh my god, okay, Andrew, I can watch this. Clutch. That was unreal. Let's go in with my ult. Wait, wait. <laughs> this guy just Ulti fully fucking spot? pushed the... Oh, fuck me. Um, wait, if I see an enemy. Okay. You can just hold me then. Only you're in dugout or secret. Okay. But not Keep when up. I'm not in ult. Okay. Brimmy, Steamy, <laughs> Shadow Dash, let's go. Get out of my way. Oh, you're playing contact, never mind. Flashing? Uh, cross the placement, okay? We talk about this specifically. Your cross placement is way too low. Look, you're swinging a corner by shift walking, and your crosser is not ready. You see this? You're aiming at, at Nice right now. Flashing? This is still too low. The person that is going to be standing in this corner is most likely has his head over here. Wait for my ult. Sky is here. Same flash situation. Again, you're exposed to uh, dugout, right? No no smoke. From Shadow Dash, you really need to be faster. Link. Who wants to go there? No, 4v2. Fucking push together. Go, go, go. Yeah. One enemy remaining. That's done. Good job. Quick break.
No more no, I'm the only one who followed your ultimate. I can... That was no stimmy because I want to ult them. But think about it this way. This round could have been done very aggressively. So just for feedback for the entire group, right? You're playing as a tr three stack. So you have Brimmy, you have Breach, and you have Phoenix together, right? You can make an aggro play. You don't have to play contact. Think about it this way. We could have played this round like this. Round starts, Brimstone drops the Steam Beacon. Literally, first thing you do, Brimstone, stop, Brimstone does the Steam Beacon. Then, Brimstone does the smokes, right? So you do two smokes, essentially. Uh, I mean, they yeah, do three smokes, I guess. You do the smoke here, you do the smoke here, you do the smoke over here, right? And now, Phoenix got the buff, so he can flash this area, right? So, uh... Actually, let me show it on Valorplant, because it's going to be easier, and now I have to, like, explain it without repeating what I'm saying. This is going to be easier. So, I'm going to go Pearl. We're going to go A. A, execute, right? We know what's the plan. We have the Brimstone ultimate. We have the Phoenix ultimate, right? And we have... We are playing in a trio. So, my call would be... First order of business... Steam Beacon instantly at the barrier. Like, the moment the barrier drops, I'm looking down and putting the Steam Beacon over here so everyone runs through it. Phoenix goes through. Bridge goes through. I'm running as well with an iPad open, right? Now, I do the smokes as early as possible because we know we're going to commit. So I do the smokes. Now, Phoenix... Where is Phoenix? Flash's first position to make sure that he can take the space. Right? We're running in. We cleared everything because of the flash. Right? Phoenix goes in. Ults. Breach can flash through the wall before that ult goes through because the second, second flash is going to go from Phoenix itself. So you just help him. Where is the fucking Breach? Flash through here. Phoenix goes over here, flashes for the second time for yourself, over here. Stun is ready by, uh, with the breach, right? So when the Phoenix runs in, you will see the minimap, you're gonna stun the first player that he sees, you stun it, Brimson is in the ult, can ult, and you run in after the, after the Phoenix player. Let's assume that the other duelist, the Jet, was there with the Phoenix all the time, so you don't have to fucking push like, as the Brim and the Breach, as efficiently as the Phoenix. Right? I was the only one who followed your ult. Yeah, I will. I, I want to kill. Oh. Yeah, 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 that's fine. Did that's you fine. get a kill? That, 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 yeah, I no, beat I this didn't. guy. Oh. I killed this guy. Okay. Mm. What is your ranking, competitive guys? Let's go. You are lying, bitch. <laughs> Flying bitch! Same thing about the, the, the flash that I did before, right? I didn't show any. Shadow Dash, you're peeking with your iPad out. You're dead against better players. I'm gonna flash back to it. Oh, I don't have this bike. You had the footsteps on the left, by the way, so you're now fully exposed. You now have no util. Eh, that clear was very lazy. Look. No charges left. Again, very lazy peaks. I'm going there. You know what I'm saying? Okay. L let me let me show it to you. How how would that look if you would have done it efficiently? Without util, right? Because you had no util. How am I clearing this? Efficiently without being scared by playing confid confidently, right? First clear. Second clear. Third clear. I'm cutting the corners, right? Sorry, not cutting the corners. I'm cutting the pie. I'm doing that by being confident in my movement. I don't make noise because I know how much of a distance I can do without the footsteps, right? By doing a strafe peak. There's no footsteps over here, right? When you do this distance, no footsteps. I go forward, no footsteps. No footsteps. I didn't do any footsteps, but my aim... Sorry, my crosser was always ready for a peak, and I tried 
to get as much as possible done with the least possible movement. You know? And now look, look how you did it. You look like very not confident in the way you're peeking. Your cursor placement is on the ground and you're moving with a shift by not like just like a little bit. You're checking at the corners, but not not exactly. You're checking a little bit, but not exactly. You know what I mean? And you like try to peek by going in the middle of the corner. Sorry, by middle of the corridor. Well, you want to check, for example, the corner behind you. You want to stick to the wall over here and peek into this direction. So you limit the, the amount of angles that someone can peek you from here. Right? One enemy remaining. Is it behind? One more. <laughs> yes. This motherfucker is moving properly. Okay. There's zero reason to clear that? Of course there's Wait. always a reason to clear that. Please don't listen to that. Oh, That's how bad I'm habits are being country. born. Or not. <laughs> to stun the teammates and flash them. Together. <laughs> no comment. Oh my god. Yeah. And also, by the way, I realized that in this game, there was only one time you went mid. Hold it. And not a single round was being played as a default. I think that's more about like how the team plays, but it's fine. Oh, All right. One enemy remaining. Well, it's a little bit over aggressive, but again, look, look, look at the peaks. See how you pe like how you're peeking? You're always not ready for the gunfight, right? The same was happening here. Look. See where your like crosser is. You also fully give your opponent the informations that you're gonna peek for this. So you're given the advantage. Oh, One enemy remaining. Go into that smoke silently and then fully swing with full speed from that smoke. <laughs> oh! oh! You have still one more round to play. Heaven. Nice job. That ult would have been so valuable for the next round. Right? That ult would be so valuable. Next round. And also, one piece of advice. not This is not meant to insult you. But, unless you fix your cross replacement, please don't buy Sheriff at all. Okay? Don't buy the Sheriff at all. Try to work on the cross replacement first. Try to use Shorty as your secondary to like... Uh, like in general, Shorty's, Shorty or Ghost is always better as a secondary than a, than a Deagle unless you're playing a weapon that doesn't have the capability of playing long range, right? So if I play Judge, if I play Judge, I buy, if I can, a Sheriff or a Ghost as a secondary. If I play Vandal... I buy a shorty or a ghost as a secondary. If I play guardian, I buy a shorty because I want to supplement what I'm missing. Because I'm not missing long range or mid range gunfights. I'm missing close range gunfights. So I want to supplement that with the shorty, right? If I buy an operator, for the love of God, I will never buy a sheriff because you need a gun that swaps fast after you shoot. So you need a ghost or you need a shorty. But you never want to buy a Frenzy or a Sheriff when you play an Operator because of the one equipped, one second equip time that fucks you over so much when you play a gun like an Operator. And you also want to have a gun that benefits from closer range fights so, so you don't have to be fully precise. So Ghost is probably the ultimate choice for an Operator player. Or if you have an ability to close up the range, Shorty, if you play for a Jet, like a, like a Jet for example, you know? This is a bronze lobby. It doesn't matter what rank it is. People at Immortal are still doing fucking mistakes like that. So don't be condescending. Learn. I flash for you your peak. Watch and learn. Oh my god, this sky is losing so much value from the dog. Go on side. By the way. Look at look at the dog. 
it never checked this corner. Right? It was like, yeah, it looked a little bit to the left, but it never checked it. But you, but you didn't check the corner. Someone can be right behind you right now. And <laughs> I don't know how it is possible, but look at the minimap right now. Look at the distance between you and the rest of the team. Absolutely. You're doing an execute on your own. There's literally no one to help you. And I don't know why, right? But I might guess that is the same reason that I did give to you when you were standing on a main you were too far away from the barrier you were not paying attention to someone who is in front of you so you end up in a gunfight when no one is helping you where am I? To link. Alright, let me let me watch this again. Fight it. You did the flash but had no effect, right? So it's like No charges left. It's not bad, it's not terrible, I'm just saying that you didn't get any value from it, right? And now you're peeking into an ultimate when you fully know it. You overheat it. This is a classic overheat. Like, you didn't have to do anything here, right? After the sky dies, there's like nothing you can do that to help it. Wait, my wife is calling. Coś ważnego? W samochodzie. So, uh, you, this is like a classic of a hit. Like, uh, after this... After the sky dies... Right, wait, did she die? No, she didn't die. Like, look, your sky actually falls back. So, there's no reason for you to peek here. It's it's 4v4, they need to do a retake. They go with the ult, right? So, the thing that you do, you have to do right now is just be passive. And that's it. Where am I? To link. What the fuck? on chat. Also, what the fuck is this Astra ultimate? Ah, that's opponent's Astra. Never mind, it's good. Oof. Yeah, well played by Astra. Oh, this motherfucker. Enemy spotted B. John, John. I mean, yeah, this is done. All right. So to sum it up, to sum it up, you need to work on on basics, right? Cross placement, swinging with a strafe, right? Uh, let me turn off the epic epic pen because I'm going to be tilted again. Um, so you need to really work on the basics. Because those are the most important things that you that you can benefit from. So, cross the placement. Use the visual aid to help you visualize where the opposing player's head should be. See this line? The designers of Valorant put it for a reason. This is the head level. Right? This is the head level. This is where you want to have your crosser. That's something that you need to work on. Second, think before peeking and put yourself in a state that you're ready to fight. So don't peek when your crosser is like in the ground. Always mentally check yourself. Do it like a checklist before you peek. It's like, is my crosser all right? I I am I focused to fight? Always expect an enemy to be in front of you. S third thing, Make the swings, practice the swings to not make footsteps without shift, right? Strafe left, no footsteps. Strafe right, no footsteps. Step, le step left, no footsteps. Step right, no footsteps. Right? That's something that you need to work on. And then the distance of the flash for the Phoenix, right? You want to know it by heart to make the pop flash as effective. Remember, it's 5 meters, right? So it's like from here. This is something that you need to visualize yourself. And that comes with practice. Right? So you're going to be more efficient with the flashes. And always expect 
your enemy to be in front of you at every single moment. Never peek with your utility out. Never peek with, with your utility out, uh, utility out, like you did on mid, right? Remember this. Like, the moment you peeked here, I got a heart attack. Like this. Never do this. Always do this. Always be ready. If you really want to use it, try to, like, find angles that will benefit you. Because you're not going to be exposed to gunfire, right? And also, something that I really do think that you should benefit from is, like, having a, having a plan before the round starts. So you know what you're going to be plan of action, right? So when you go, like, here, always know to flash. Like, you will benefit so much by just having this first flash here. Even if there's a sky with you, if, if he's not flashing, always remember, you, you're going to flash for yourself, right? If you do a flash like this, it is so fucking hard to dodge, look. And it explodes on the corner over here, like it flashes everyone that stands here. It's so fucking hard to dodge. And you still have one more flash to enter the site. And remember, always flash the way that it benefits your peak. I oh, well, you spoke about that extensively in the VOD. So thank you very much for sending this. This is very important uh, that to realize that doesn't matter which rank are you, right? Doesn't matter which rank are you. When you send a VOD review, it's very brave for you to open yourself to critique and learn from. So round of applause for Clara to, for sending the VOD. It's a really big step in getting better at the game.